All right, guys. Uh, welcome all to this new reading group session organized by Continual AI. Today, we're going to learn from Sanket and Gurunath about his work uh, learning to recognize code switch to speech, uh, speech without forgetting monolingual speech recognition. And so, without, without further ado, thanks again for joining Sanket and Gurunath, and the stage is yours. Uh, okay, great. Uh, thanks, Vincenzo, for inviting us. Uh, it's really great to come here and present our uh, recent work on uh, uh, improving speech recognition systems. So, yeah. Um, I just turn off my video. Uh, okay. So, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Sanket. And I currently am a research fellow at uh, Microsoft uh, Research India. Uh, I completed my undergrad in BTEC in computer science uh, in uh, IIIT Hyderabad, which is an undergrad school in India. Uh, Gurunath Reddy Madhumani, who is going to help me with the presentation today, he is currently a research intern at Microsoft India. And yeah, he is also currently pursuing his PhD. Uh, at IIT Kharagpur in India, uh, and uh, Sunena, Basil, and Vikas are senior researchers at Microsoft. And uh, today we all uh, like we've been working on this uh, interesting work on improving speech recognition systems. And uh, yeah, today I'll be presenting along with Kuruna uh, what it is called as learning to recognize code switched speech without forgetting monolingual speech recognition. Uh, so yes, uh, before I move on to the uh, actual work, uh, since most of you here would not be familiar, would not be actually having background in speech. So I'll just uh, once uh, help you understand what is code switching. So code switching is something, is a phenomena which is quite prevalent in multilingual societies where people tend to know more than one language. So what they tend to do is they tend to mix up more than one language in a single utterance or a single conversation, right? So as you can see, there are two examples on the screen. So these are audio examples. Uh, I wish I could play these audios to you, but I think Google Meet doesn't allow me to uh, share my system audio. So I'll just read them out to you. This is Gujarati language. Yeah. So. Uh, it goes like this. A prasange, Shraddaduoe, Nisadan, Mandirna, Sarjak, Ane Lok Ladila, Dharma Gurune, Shraddanjali, Pan Arpi Hati. So, this is a purely Gujarati utterance. Uh, and this is what we call is as a monolingual speech. While the second example, uh, which you can see on your screen, uh, I'll just read that out to you. Tiarbad, uh, Jaipur, Bangalore, Mumbai, Ni. Flight operation, no planning, so this is actually an example of code switching. So you can, uh, as you can see, uh, yeah, so as you can see, there are these two words, uh, flight operation, and there is here this word called planning. This is actually English, and this is being spoken along with other Gujarati words. And this is a very interesting example of what is called as code switching. And mind you, this is very much prevalent in multilingual societies, uh, and especially in the country like India, where people, uh, where there are more than like 15, 20 official languages. So yeah, and, and this really is a big problem currently for uh, speech recognition systems, because uh, they really fail uh, when they have to recognize audios which are actually code switched because they are not actually trained to recognize such audios. So yeah, coming to the actual problem. So let's take an example. Like let's say that uh, what if you have a speech recognition system which is just trained on recognizing monolingual speech. Uh, it, it has no idea of what code mixing is. Then what will be the performance of the system? So this is an example of uh, a code switched uh, speech. It's a code switched utterance where you can clearly see that there are words like banking, postal, a gas sector, which are being spoken. These are English words which are being spoken along with 
this Gujarati uh, words. When you pass this audio, actually through the system, which is trained on uh, monolingual speech, uh, this is what the output you get. So as you see, there are the first eight words, which are in Gujarati, are purely monolingual. Those eight words, when are recognized correctly, when you pass this audio through the system, through the uh, speech recognition system, uh, when it comes to banking postal, which is a which is an English uh, phrase, or you can say uh, uh, biogram, English biogram, uh, this was actually not recognized well by the system, and it just gave some garbage output for this phrase uh, coming to the next two words which are gujarati they were recognized pretty well uh, again gas sector which is an english biogram uh, the system failed to recognize these words and uh, interestingly gas uh, uh, was recognized as its transliterated version like in gujarati and uh, I'll, I'll be explaining what the uh, recognition system looks like, but yeah, uh, the speech recognition system also, when it is predicting, when it is recognizing words, it also takes into consideration uh, the context. So here you see that since the previous five words had a lot of English being spoken, uh, that is why the, the system probably lost the context and it uh, its performance on recognizing uh, further Gujarati words was also affected and the recognition was poor. So qualitatively, as you see on the screen, you see that uh, if you have a speech system which is trained on monolingual speech and when you pass a code switch or code mixed uh, utterance through it, utterance or you say an audio through it, uh, the recognition is pretty poor and uh, let's let's come up to the quantitative exact quantitative results for this so yeah table one is actually word error rates and uh, i'll just explain what is word error rate. so word error rate is a common metric which is used to hello yeah so word error rate is a common metric which is uh, used to analyze the performance of uh, speech recognition systems or machine translation systems so more formally uh, word error rate takes into consideration the number of substitutions, insertions, and deletions which need to be made to the ASR recognition to make it equivalent to the reference transcript. So the lower the word error rate, the better is the system. So here in table one, we see that, uh, so we have these three test sets, like three different languages on which we tested the system. And we have monolingual as well as code switched test sets. We see that the monolingual word error rates are 42% on Gujarati, 50% on Tamil, and 46.90% on Telugu. So Gujarati, Tamil, Telugu are kind of uh, one of the most uh, one of the most common languages which are being which are spoken in India. And the word error rates on code switched test sets are 51, 67, and 59% respectively. So you can clearly see that when the system is trained on monolingual audios its performance is really bad on code switched test sets. It's approximately 12 to 15% poor. Let's take the case other way around. Like, let's say that if you have trained a system on only code switch speech, so, so the system actually knows that every audio which it's going to get as an input is going to be code switched, meaning there are going to be multiple languages which which are going to be spoken in it. Like, so for example, let's say you have trained the system on a pair of language called Gujarati and English. Now, if you pass this monolingual uh, utterance, like here, as you see on your screen, if you pass this utterance through the system, uh, the system unnecessarily uh, recognizes some words as English because it is trained to do so. And, and interestingly, which we, we see here as an example, there's one word called uh, snayunu. So this word actually was recognized as netno, like N-E-T, English word. And there's another Gujarati term called timethi. And this Gujarati term was recognized in English as GMA. So, uh, and quantitatively, when you actually look at the results, you see that when you have a system which is trained on uh, code switched speech, uh, the performance on code switch test sets across all the languages is 
uh, let's say 47, 63, and 44 percent respectively. But on monolingual, the performance is poor. Uh, approximately 8 to 15 percent word error rate. Uh, it has a, a poor word error rate on uh, monolingual test sets. So, just summarizing the problem in this slide. Uh, it's like a seesaw effect, uh, as you saw. So if you train a system on monolingual data, it performs good on monolingual audios, uh, while it performs poor on code-switched audios. And when you train a system on code-switched audios, uh, it performs good on code-switched audios, while the performance is bad on monolingual audios, which is pretty obvious to us, right? And as you see the numbers in table four, this is uh, pretty obvious to us. And uh, the, code, the code switch systems, uh, speech recognition systems are doing well on code switch test sets. So here you can see Tamil, TA means Tamil, T means Telugu, and GU means Gujarati. So these three languages we have tested our systems on. And we have MONO means Mono and CS means code switch. So we see that the code switch systems are performing uh, well, better than the monolingual ones. Uh, on code switch test sets, while the monolingual system is performing better on monolingual test sets uh, than the code switch test sets. Uh, but when you come to the practical world, actually, what happens is that uh, it's practically impossible to separate monolingual audios from code switched audios. Like people tend to code switch very frequently, and it's practically unpredictable to know when the person is actually code switching or he's not code switching. So we cannot afford to actually build two separate systems for uh, recognizing monolingual audios and uh, code switched audios. And that is why uh, this is what we come up with. Like this is what the aim of our work is. Like we need to come up with one single model which can actually do good on both, uh, both these tasks, like one is the speech recognition on monolingual task, as well as speech recognition on uh, code switched uh, speech. So great. Uh, so uh, as the motivation is pretty clear, I'll uh, describe uh, the data on which all our, we carried out all our experiments. So we actually carried out our experiments uh, on Tamil, Telugu, and Gujarati language. So we wanted to see that our systems perform consistently across more than at least one language. And the amount of data which we have is uh, approximately uh, 180 to uh, 250 hours of data for both monolingual as well as code switch. And uh, we have around 50 to 25 hours of uh, test data for both mono as well as code switched and across all Tamil, Telugu and Gujarati language. Uh, you can actually see something called CMI here on the screen. So yeah, so CMI is called a uh, code mixing index. So uh, code mixing index is a measure of how the two languages are being mixed quantitatively in a single utterance. So you can say that if the CMI is high, uh, the amount of code mixing is more in that particular utterance. And uh, in previous uh, works, authors have shown that the results of the system, the accuracy of the system highly varies uh, with respect to the CMI of the data. So in our case, the Tamil language data set, what we have has a code mixing index of 22.08, the Telugu is 23. So Tamil and Telugu are quite similar to each other in terms of the data set what we have. And uh, Gujarati is around 18 CMI, so it's pretty low. So we wanted to see if our results vary uh, with respect to the amount of code mixing which is happening in a single audio. Yeah, there are some more examples from our data set. So uh, first pair is Tamil, where you can see that uh, the yellow highlighted words are English, which are being spoken along with other words, which are in Tamil. The second pair is uh, Telugu, and the uh, yellow highlighted is again Team India, Test Captain, and uh, the words. So yeah, so the 
in each pair the first utterance is monolingual and the second utterance is code switch and as you can see here in the last gujarati pair we see that the code mixing is pretty less there's only one word which was english with uh, as compared to all the other words which were uh, actually gujarati so the uh, the cmi is pretty low for gujarati as we saw in our previous slide right uh, so now i'll just uh, give you a basic uh, idea of how a speech recognition end to end speech recognition model looks like so if you have an audio uh, what we do is we take 20 millisecond frames of the audio extract spectral features of it these features are passed to passed through a two dimensional convolution network uh, the output of this convolution network is passed through a uh, layers of rnn uh, these rnn layers are actually used uh, to store the context when the recognition is being done the outputs of these rnns are passed on to a fully connected layer and which is followed by a softmax classifier so this entire uh, end to end speech recognition model is trained using a uh, ctc loss function which is a, a pretty common loss function used for uh, current speech recognition systems so yeah we we consider this uh, this this system is actually based on deep speech uh, 2 and we consider this system as our base system and we improve upon this system for all our further experiments so yeah uh coming to the strategies uh we we already know that uh, our uh, our aim is to develop one single model a uh, speech recognition model which can do good on both monolingual as well as code switched uh, audios right so uh, we uh, carefully uh, uh like come up with two separate cases for our uh, problem uh, keeping in mind uh, very two important constraints so the first constraint is uh, availability of mono and code switch data uh, that is like we we really need to uh, ask ourselves that before we train the system do we really have that much amount of data available uh, for both monolingual as well as code switch because uh, speech data is very expensive it, it, it's it really takes a lot of time to transcribe the audios and second constraint is that flexibility of retraining the existing models from scratch uh, so uh, uh, the speech models uh, uh, for example if you take any state of the art speech recognition models uh they are trained on thousands and thousands of hours of data and it actually takes probably a month to train such models and now if you suddenly come across this new task which is code switching uh do you really have the flexibility of retraining these existing models from scratch like uh do you really want to retrain these models uh like again spend like a lot of time to retrain them uh so by with these two uh, constraints we come up with uh, two cases like case one is like we assume that we have access to both monolingual as well as code switched uh speech data and we also have the flexibility to train the models from scratch and case two is that let's assume that we have access to only the new task data that in our case is code switched uh data and Uh, we have access to uh, the pre-trained model weights. Like, can we reuse that model? So, yeah. So, I'll be taking care of case one, and Gurunath will actually talk about case two. Right. So, case one. Uh, we uh, case one is like uh, let's assume that we do not have any constraints on the data availability, and we have full flexibility to train the systems from scratch. So the first thing which comes to our mind is let's get the baselines ready. So we have the pooled model ready. Uh, in this pooled model, what we do is we just combine all the data we have, we whatever monolingual data we have and the code switch data, we just combine it and uh, train the system as it is to see what is the performance. And interestingly, we see that the performance, the pooled model, actually performs. better 
across all the languages and across monolingual as well as code switch tests so it's better actually than uh, individual monolingual systems or individual code switch systems so we we treat this pooled model as our baseline and uh, we actually try to uh, improve this pooled models uh, performance on code switched audios uh, in further experiments so yeah uh, we need to come up with some strategies for case 1 like we already know that case 1 was we have access to all the data and also retraining the systems from scratch so the first step what we did was we just retrained the model with all the data and that is what we call it as our pooled model and we treat it as our baseline uh now what we know is that there's suddenly a new task which comes up like even in the practical scenarios code switching has become very much common currently than it was uh probably few years back uh we have this new task now we want to improve the performance of this model on this new task which has come up with which is code switching but we have an interesting constraint in mind that is we do not want to degrade the performance of uh this pooled model on monolingual speech recognition but at the same time we want to improve this model's performance on code switched audios so for that uh cons- for that uh task and with this constraint in mind we actually designed like we uh come up with uh three uh experiments uh first is uh fine tuning the pooled model with a lower learning rate second is uh varying the amount of code switching data like during fine tuning it's like a curriculum learning where uh we step by step uh train the model or and we train it with different amount of uh new tasks data and third is uh using some kind of a regularizer so the first method is pretty clear we fine tune the pooled model with uh the code switch data which, which is our new tasks data and with a lower learning rate so interestingly what we see was that uh, for tamil and telugu the pooled the, the fine tuned model uh it performs better on uh code switch test sets for tamil as well as telugu while there's a degradation of performance on monolingual test sets uh and on gujarati interestingly we have an improvement on both uh, monolingual as well as code switched test sets and this would be the definitely would be the case uh, uh because uh, the gujarati data which we had had a low cmi that is low code mixing index like the amount of code mixing which was happening in gujarati was pretty low but for the first four test sets which is pretty critical for us is that we improved on code switched audios but we deteriorated on monolingual and which is what we do not want uh if you are learning a new task we do not want to forget uh or we don't want to deteriorate on the previous task so probably what we saw was that since we are fine tuning with uh, all the cs data we have that is code switch data we have let's not do that let's uh, give uh, vary the amount of data we use during fine tuning during every epoch uh, just vary the amount of data so we experiment with using 75% of the code switch data we have uh, during fine tuning then also experiment with 50% and then 25% uh and interestingly what we see was that uh by using only 25% of the data uh, of the code switch that is the new tasks data and then fine tuning the pooled model uh we got the best performance uh across all the languages and also on monolingual and code switch and this was pretty interesting results for us and then finally uh, we come up with the third strategy that is what if we want to use all the data we have for the new task and just uh, fine tune the model uh, the first thing which comes to our head was using some kind of a regularizer during fine tuning so uh, the best uh, thing which struck us was we use scale divergence as a regularizer 
and we take a linear combination of uh, the KL divergence loss along with the CTC loss and uh, just uh, train the system. Uh, and we also experiment with scaled because when we when when we were training the system, we saw that the uh, KL divergence uh, between the uh, output uh, distribution from the currently the the, the uh, model which is being trained and the output distribution from the pre-trained model, the the KL divergence loss value was pretty low and it had a very minimalistic effect on the total loss. So we used something called scaled KLD. That is, we multiply the uh, KL loss value with a constant factor and then add it to the uh, CTC loss so that its effect is seen during training. And interestingly, what the results what we got was that uh, using the scaled uh, divergence, we get an improvement on uh, both monolingual and code switched test sets for Tamil language. Uh, while using uh, alpha value as 0 0.3, that is combining CTC loss and KL loss in the ratio of 7 is to 3, uh, we get the best performance for Telugu language. Uh, and for Gujarati, we interestingly, we did not see any improvements uh, using the KL uh, divergence regularizer during fine tuning. And probably again, uh, this could be due to the fact that uh, Gujarati was pretty different from Tamil and Telugu in terms of code mixing, code mixed index. Uh, so yeah, uh, this was all actually about case one and I'll just summarize it, uh, uh, summarize case one before I uh, uh, give it to Guruna to explain case two. So systems which are built using just monolingual data aren't enough to recognize code switched speech and it's vice versa as we saw in the seesaw effect. Uh, training a speech recognizer from both monolingual plus code switch data and fine tuning on code switched data, that is a new task data, results in degradation of performance on monolingual speech recognition. Uh, third is when fine tuning the pooled model with less amount of uh, the new task data that is code switch data it it actually results in improvements on performance of on both monolingual as well as code switch code switch speech uh, adding a kl divergence regularizer during fine tuning of pooled model with code switch data helps in improving performance on both mono as well as code, code switch speech and finally the most important point is that uh, fine tuning techniques require minimal changes to the existing model architecture and which is pretty favorable uh, when it comes to uh, deploying these models to production like and it has a lot of industrial uh, benefits so yeah this was uh, actually end of case one where we assume that we have access to uh, mono as well as code switch data and we have the flexibility to train the models from scratch uh, coming to case two, uh, which is pretty interesting, where we assume that we have access to only the new tasks data and the old model. Uh, this will be explained by uh, Gurunath. So I'll just hand over the stage to Gurunath to, from here. Uh, thank you, Sanket. So in the previous experiments, uh, we saw that we can achieve best performance when we fine tune a pool model with the code mixing data. However, we have to note that uh, training a pool model requires both monolingual and the code mixed data. Also, from the fine tuning experiments, we found that when we fine tune the pool model with code mixing data, the monolingual performance start deteriorating in favor of code mixed speech recognition. We call this phenomenon as a catastrophic forgetting. Here, we want to address the problem of learning code mixed speech recognition while improving the monolingual speech recognition when we have only access to the code mixed data and monolingual model, and we don't have access to monolingual data. Right. Next. So learning without forgetting, in short, LWF is a possible solution to the previously mentioned problems. LWF is a novel technique proposed by Lizzy and OMD to learn the parameters of the new task without degrading performance of the old task for image classification. In LWF, we want to learn a new task by adding new task layers to the old task model 
to improve the performance of both tasks as shown in figure B. In this framework, we assume that we have only access to the old task model and new task data, and there is no training data for old task. We derive the labels of the old task by passing new, new task data to the old model as shown in figure A. Then we add the new task layers to the old task model and train the joint model end to end with the targets as labels derived from figure A and the new task data labels by passing new task data as input. This type of model plays a significant role in speech recognition since most of the time we have access to the pre-trained monolingual model and we want to adapt this model to the code mix data. Also, many times obtaining a monolingual model is expensive uh, due to amount of data used to train the model. Next slide. So, the LWF model to learn the code switch speech recognition without forgetting monolingual speech recognition is shown in figure. And the algorithm to train the model is shown in table. Our model consists of CNN and BLSTM layers as shared layers as shown inside the dotted box. Fully connected and softmax layers as task specific layers. We denote shared layer parameters as theta s and task specific monolingual and code switched layer parameters as theta m and theta c respectively. We train the model in three steps as shown in figure. Initially, we obtain the monolingual task labels by passing core mixed speech utterances to the pre-trained monolingual model. We denote these labels as YM as shown in figure A. In the warm-up step, we add the core mixed task layers to the monolingual model and initialize the core mixed layer parameters randomly. We freeze the shared layer, uh, shared layer and monolingual parameters and uh, learn the core mixed layer parameters by passing the core mixed speech utterances with the targets as YM, which are derived from figure A, and the code mixed labels YC as shown in figure B. In the fine tuning step, we jointly train the model end to end by unfreezing all parameters as shown in figure C, with the last functions as sum of monolingual and code mixed CTC loss. To the best of our knowledge, we are the first to adopt LWF framework to speech recognition. In particular, for code mixed speech recognition. Next slide. The word, error, the word error rates of the proposed LWF model compared with the model trained with only monolingual data, that is experiment one, model trained with only code mixed data, experiment two, monolingual model fine tuned with code mixed data, that is experiment three, and the best model which we have obtained from our previous fine tuning experiments with pooled model, that is best FT, where best FT acts as upper bound performance to our LWF model is shown in table. From table, we can observe that LWF outperforms experiment one, experiment two, and experiment three for all test sets, except for Gujarati monolingual data. However, we can see a large drop in performance by experiment three for Gujarati monolingual, but which is mitigated by LWF. Critically, we see that LWF outperforms experiment three, which is a monolingual model fine-tuned on code mixed data. Also, LWF outperforms experiment three, ex sorry, experiment two for Tamil and Gujarati code mixed test set. Whereas LWF is marginally better than experiment two for Telugu code mixed data. This is because of varying code mix code mixing index for each language. This indicates that LWF framework can be used for building code switched models without harming monolingual performance and without relying on having a pooled model for fine tuning. From the results, we can see that LWF can be used for improving the performance of both monolingual and core mixed speech recognition. In summary, uh, we found that uh, fine tuning models for core switching can lead to drop in performance in monolingual models. A pooled model performs well on both monolingual and core switch test sets but fine tuning this model with less code switch data and regularization leads to best performance. Further, we proposed using the learning without forgetting framework to build code switch models without sacrificing monolingual accuracy. To the best of our knowledge, uh, we are the first to introduce the LWF framework to speech recognition, in particular for code switch speech recognition. Code switch speech and uh, text us uh, usually co-occurs with monolingual speech and text. Hence, we suggest that 
future models built for core switched task should also be tested on monolingual test sets uh, recently we also proposed uh, an adversarial uh, we also proposed a adversarial uh, task invariant shared layer method in this method we try to learn um, a task invariant shared layer uh, shared layer parameters for improving both core mixed and uh, monolingual speech recognition task and this work can you can actually find at uh, archive uh, the link provided in our slides uh, thank you very much and uh, we are open to questions thank you so much sankat and gurunath for this very nice talk i think it was great i mean it's a uh... It's truly one of the first cases in which we see continuous learning strategies applied to speech recognition or related tasks. So thank you again for, for your great talk. Uh, so maybe I can start uh, with a question just to break the ice. Um, so you said that you, I mean, for what I understood, you were fine tuning your model with just the code switch uh, data, right? So, but, but in the first case, you had access to all the data also from the monolingual, let's say, data set, right? Right. So, so I, have you tried to fine tune your model uh, with all the data instead of just the code switch the data? Uh, yeah, that's an interesting question. Actually, uh, no, we've actually not tried uh, to fine tune the models with both monolingual as well as code switched data. So we were actually so our goal was uh, pretty clear uh, that we wanted to improve on uh, specifically uh, code switched task. So uh, let's say if we have a pooled model, which is already well trained on both monolingual as well as code switch data, uh, can we just use the code switched data? Like when the new task comes, can you just use the data for that new task? And then you somehow uh, uh, fine tune the pre-trained model and improve its performance while not degrading it on monolingual uh, test sets. Uh, but yeah, you are right. Probably fine tuning it, fine tuning the model with both monolingual and code switch data would have some interesting results too. But yeah, it's it's in it's in our uh, line of work, which we would be definitely doing it uh, soon. Yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, I completely yeah. agree with you, and uh, and I also think that the second case is uh, most more interesting, especially for the continual learning uh, aspects. Right. Uh, but also, as you said, for many you know efficiency uh, problems that training from scratch all over the time, you know uh, these when you have a new task for, from all these data can be can be daunting. Um, another question uh, uh, was uh, so I, I see that it seems that the performances are improving when you reduce the amount of data in that case. It is also in the fine tuning case. So do you have an idea right. on why that happens? I mean. It, it would reasonably it would it would uh, I mean the performances should improve based at least on the code switched uh, task based on the amount of of the data that you provide, right? Uh, right. Uh, so that's uh, that was actually a question which also came to our uh, notice actually when we were looking at the results. So uh, I'll just actually go through the process. Uh, so let's say if we have uh, 100 hours of data and uh, uh, let's say 100 hours of code switch data and so what this 25 percent of data means is actually uh, at every epoch we randomly pick up 25 percent of the data from this entire uh, data we have for the new task okay so uh, so at every epoch there will be some new kind of data which will be used uh, for fine tuning for that particular epoch so probably at the end of around like 15 20 epochs so uh, the model would have actually seen all the data it has but the only constraint the model would be having is that for every epoch the amount of data which it is seeing for the new task is low and uh, probably that's the reason uh, why the performance improved on uh, uh, monolingual test sets because the amount of data for the new task was low while we were fine tuning. But at the same time, since we were randomly picking 25% of the data from the complete pool of data we have, it was getting a chance to see a large variety of uh, uh, particular instances of the data. 
although at different epochs so probably that was the reason why it also improved upon the code switched uh, speech recognition task so probably that could be one reason why this is happening but yeah further investigation into why such an uh, not so obvious results are would be interesting which we would be definitely doing it thanks yeah. thanks so much uh, does anyone has a question for our speakers so yes i have just one quick question thank you for for the presentation and can you hear me yes yes yes, yes. Okay. did you use uh, an open data set, so something available online, or did you have your own uh, data set uh, to train this model? Uh, yeah, yes, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so, yeah, so no, uh, we've not trained our models on any open source data set. So this is the data which we have internally with us. Uh, and yeah. So some instances, uh, so uh, of this data, uh, you can actually, so we at uh, Interspeech uh, 2020, so we have this, Microsoft has organized this workshop uh, where we have proposed a shared task of language identification. So it's the first workshop on speech, uh, code switch speech recognition. And there we've actually released uh, some amount of data from this data, what we have used to train the systems. Uh, so yeah, that data will, uh, you, you can actually, uh, probably if there is some way to point you to that link, or you can just, uh, you can look up the first workshop on code switch speech recognition organized by Microsoft. And there you uh, can uh, have access to the data which we have used for our experiments. But yeah, we've not tested our systems on any open source data as of now. Okay, cool, thank you. And just another yeah. one. Uh, about the, the output size of the model. So uh, more or less, uh, how many words, uh, how many tokens uh, did you consider in, uh, in this transcription from uh, audio to, let's say, to, to words? Uh, yeah, one second. So this is the, uh, the output uh, labels will be the union of uh, the both uh, code mixed and uh, monolingual um, test sets. Yeah. Uh, this is a, this is basically the characters, the unique characters which are present in both languages. It will be approximately around the eighty characters or so. Okay. Oh, so this is a character-based, uh, let's say, approach, not a word-based. Yeah, yeah. This is a character character-based. Okay. Character. Okay. Okay. Now it's clear. Thank you. Right. Yeah. And and uh, and for every utterance, the for every let's say a particular audio, uh, for uh, so the average number of words are around uh, 12 for Gujarati, uh, 9.7, like the average, 9 to 10 words for Tam Telugu. And for Tamil, it's around same, 9 to 10. So so these are the number of words which a single audio clip would have in our data sets. Oh, OK, OK, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Great. Uh, any other question? Uh, I have one. So in your uh, use case, you have just uh, two data set, the monolingual and then the code switch data set. I'm wondering if there are uh, any other uh, task in speech where you have uh, a much larger number of tasks, because usually continuous learning is useful when you have uh, a lot of different tasks. Do you know oh. any examples? Uh, yeah, the the next thing could be like uh, we can actually identify whether it's like a classification task where you can actually uh, detect whether the utterance is a monolingual or a code switched, and uh, that is at utterance level. And the other task could be like uh, at frame level. Actually, you can uh, you can actually say whether the the frame belongs to the um, uh, the monolingual language or the code mixed language, and also the the other possible step can be like you can uh, you can actually identify when exactly the code mix, uh, code switching happens. So these are the some of the tasks. And but uh, anyhow, we already have a lot of uh, tasks, plenty of tasks. It's like uh, each language is uh, different. And then uh, right now we have trained uh, like uh, we have we have trained our model for one language that is uh, which will include uh, monolingual and code switched. 
but we can come up with a model where one more one single model will be going to handle all languages this would be something like a lot of tasks we will be adding to a only one one shared layer or uh, one task <clears throat> sorry one more oh yeah yeah and, and yeah and, and to add to gurnath's answer i would also say that like apart from uh, monolingual and uh, code switch speeches uh, there are a variety of problems in speech like uh, let's say if there is a conversational speech as compared to a phrasal speech which are pretty different from each other like a phrasal is just someone reading out something and a conversational is like actually a conversation happening which is more noisy uh, that could uh, also be pretty interesting tasks to look at because uh, these two although co occur with each other sometimes you need to have one model to uh, do good on both phrasal as well as conversational speech but sometimes uh, it's not possible so yeah this kind of technique would also be helpful in uh, those places where the speeches are different also accent problems like some some uh data sets might have same language like it it might be english but the accent might be different uh like us english is different than indian english which is different than european english so uh these techniques also probably would be interesting to like if you want to have uh, a same model to do good on various accents uh in speech then probably each uh different accent can be considered as a different task and probably this kind of a technique could be helpful this what we think yeah hmm. okay yeah. thank you thank you any more questions um yeah i have a question uh, first yeah, f thanks for the presentation that's was really good one. Uh, the question is i haven't worked with uh, text or a uh, speech uh, classification or recognition. Do you know it, it is easy to create the, a synthetic data set given this uh, generation text to speech uh, or, or something like that? So, so if I probably understood your question, you are asking like uh, whether synthetically we can create uh, the speech as well as text? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, yeah. So actually, we can actually generate uh, text by using uh, language models like uh, NLP, natural language processing language models. So you train, uh, you train uh, natural language generation model uh, to actually sample uh, a lot of uh, uh, the text, the text utterances. Uh, for speech, actually, uh, we can use uh, text-to-speech uh, synthesizers where you pass the text and then uh, get the speech. Speech and uh, that is how we will we can actually get the uh, speech for the uh, for uh, for uh, for uh, this one um, text alone. So other uh, yeah, these are these are the two ways we can actually generate uh, synthetic uh, speech and text. Yeah, and you can use this like to create different for different language and and all that or, or no. So for different languages, I think uh, we need uh, different models for different languages. Oh, I see. Okay. okay, great, thanks. Okay, thank you all for joining to this uh, reading group session. I will invite uh, Sanket and Guruna to upload these slides on, uh, on a forum topic I'm going to create. Uh, with respect to this uh, link session. And uh, uh, again, uh, I hope to, to see at uh, the workshop, the continuing learning workshop you're organizing at CVPR this year, so this Sunday. Otherwise, I'll see you uh, next week on Friday for the next reading group session. So thank you all again for joining and thank you our speakers. Uh, thank, yeah. you. thank you very much. For yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much all. Bye. Bye bye. Bye. Yeah. Uh, bye, Vincenzo. See you soon. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Bye. bye. Take care, everyone. Bye.